Hello, welcome back to the Schmuseum. Made it home. You guys have been under control? Just about. We've had a lot <laughs> going on though and lots of things for you to catch up on. Everything seems pretty much in the same place. Of course, over on the Schmuseum 50 channel, I have seen the STO and the new white accents on that. But we've also had a little bit of progress here. Now, I know everyone's going to say this is taking way longer than it should do. And that's partly because I've been away so much over the last couple of months. And I'm going to be away a bit more still. Typical. Sorry guys, I <laughs> just keep abandoning you. But while I've been away, we've now got spotlights yes. over here, which is amazing. It's actually kind of crazy to see each individual stage because you have no idea how much work goes into it all. We've spoken a bit about this on the videos before, but to even plan where they go and have the cables in the right place and blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of work. Derek's been doing that. Martin's going to be back very soon to try and finish the downstairs. The downstairs is literally going to be completely transformed and hopefully have some lovely glass, some flooring. It's not gonna be too long until we've actually got like a cool indoor area. No, and that hopefully means we can then start to move everything from our yes. gazebos, which was temporary, but that was temporary probably a year and a half ago. Yeah, a year and a couple of months. Those have always been temporary. We can start setting up the workshop area, all the other things that we haven't spoken about too much. And I've also got some cool ideas of what to do with this to keep it on that motorsports vibe. Obviously the 812 wasn't here, pre-America. No, that's true. Which that, is kind of weird as well. <laughs> this has now arrived. Obviously, you've spent many sort of journeys and yeah. adventures with this car. Chasing that in that, which you guys have taken out recently, um, GT500. I literally drove the GT500 chasing Jordan in the 812 to the finish line in Miami. Well, less than a year ago. Yeah. Of Gumball, Toronto to Miami. That is like a major mind kind of woof. And how does that it. happen? Um, but today, right, we should talk about what today is. We've got a lot of maintenance type tasks to do, owning these cars. Lots of them, as per our spreadsheet that we've spoken about before, have turned red. Red in the sense of needing a drive. Cars that have basically been... We, our normal thing is that the spreadsheet turns orange if it's been a month since they were last driven, and it turns red if it's been two months. So we've got to get a few cars out on the roads today. I've actually, do you know this? I've not driven the Zembo in the UK yet. It's not, I feel like you haven't been here in so long. There's just, you haven't driven this, haven't seen that. Well, if you, if you go back to when my US tour, the GT Black series began at the start of October, which feels like a long time ago, it was, it was early October. I've been in the UK for like two handfuls of days, like, yeah. like so, such a little amount of time that, yeah, that's the way it's gone, but that's not the norm. So we need to take the Ford GT because it needs an MOT. Now the MOT, normally you'd have lined up to a car's annual service. So for example, when the Senna went for its annual service in January, its fourth year service, the MOT was expiring at exactly the same time. And a few people notice with these kind of things that if the MOT goes out of, if you've had an expired MOT, you can't drive a car on the road. Now what that means with a car like this is it tends to just be sitting at the dealer and it's MOT'd when the service and everything is done. So if you're waiting on parts, if anything needs to be fixed or replaced or something like that, that gets done, then it gets MOT'd. So that's what happened with this, for example. The GT, however, had its fourth year service just before Christmas, but it also needs an MOT, which we didn't get done, and it needs it in like a week or so. So today we're going to take that over to Godlimans. That's step one. MOT is like checking your headlights are at the right level and checking there's nothing that's going to fall off and then you've got a number plate and everything like that. We're also going to take the SF90 for a little pre-run because I am about to be departing again. Sorry. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> With this on my road trip, hence the ski box that's on the top of it. So that's coming up imminently, if not tomorrow. Um, but before that, I want to pop over to the new, soon to be fully opened HRO and Ferrari dealership in Hatfield, where we're going to just do a quick look over things, hot talk up the wheels, given that we changed them to the winter tires. Just, just sanity check it basically and make sure all is good with that, ready for the adventure. There's something else really cool I wanna show you in the office room at the moment, but hey, somehow today should be dry and stay dry. Fingers crossed. Which is nice, back in the UK, let's keep it dry for winter time. The Clio. <laughs> oh yeah, you. <laughs> okay, so we've got to talk about this. In all of the videos, you guys are like dropping background things like nobody's business we we've just decided that we want to do little things to see if either <laughs> easter eggs e easter eggs that either you spot or people watching spot and in this case we went well, you've not bit. shown this down in the videos it's always been up true who did this <sighs> whose rap hmm. skills was, was so, this as you can tell it was mine <laughs> well, it started off quite really nicely actually. it started beautifully this is really well done yeah, this was the really nice Apart bit from, it's not trimmed straight that that's from we ordered it like that okay uh, it's an ebay job Okay. Um, this started all nice, 
And here it got a little bit funny. I thought, let me peel it back up and start again. It ripped, so now we have, um, <laughs> yeah. Eyelashes, googly eyes, sold to Shmi on 50. Yeah, what else pounds. do we have? Uh, we've made this lightweight carbon fibre on your badge. Lightweight badges. Uh, lightweight fog lights. lights. Have you seen our... <laughs> we cleaning stuff on the roof. Apparently, Because yeah, why not? The mirrors, carbon mirror caps. And have you seen uh, the 150 racing the... thing that actually doesn't say I, 150? I, I'm not even yeah. gonna. I'm not even gonna. Yeah. So another thing you don't know is that I've got some plans for this end of the barn. Some newish plans. Okay. We'll get to that soon as well. Tire rack is new. Lots of stuff is new. Um, I don't know really what we're doing first. We need to work out what we're doing first. See where the day takes us. I'm pretty sure all you've done while I've been away. Yes. I love how you're missing everyone right now. That's three in a row, four in a row, five in a row. <laughs> we need to put this more isn't it? frequently. Oh, I could have gone wrong. So you I'm missed no seven in a row while the cameras were before the camera was rolling. Every everyone single went one in. was going in. What people on Annoying. camera don't see is I have the world record here at this museum for this. This museum world record? Yeah. It's getting competitive in here. World record have you just, only inside this what, museum. What, what is, there finally. I said it's the, it's the pressure of the camera. It's, it's the off. pressure of the camera. Oh. <laughs> this is quite funny, isn't it? Because he is genuinely normally getting every single yeah. one in. He beats us all, all the time. Camera, camera rolls. There, there we go. go. He's back in the, oh, nearly. Back in the flow a little bit more. <laughs> Didn't you say we got some cars to drive? We do have some things that we need to let's, 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 let's go. <laughs> I don't know how many times after today we're going to be heading into our magnificent gazebos, but there is something inside here that I'd quite like to show you. So come on in for a moment where I have a gift bought for me by my girlfriend, Puppy150, of this rather lovely, gigantic Porsche crest. Now I have no idea on the history of this, what it was originally used for. It clearly needs a few little repairs and things touched up, but it's a very cool piece of garage memorabilia. And eventually here at the Museum, this and everything else are gonna be on display. And that is super cool. But this is also a very nice segue into the sponsor of today's video, Car Vertical. Now, of course, talking history and things needing repairs, this is why I always run a Car Vertical check when I'm looking at purchasing a new Schmimobile. Car Vertical are connected to all sorts of different insurance databases, government registries, auction sales records, so they have extensive information in many different countries on all sorts of different cars to help save you time and money when you're going to look at making a big purchase. Of course you want to know if there's been anything peculiar with the mileage for example, with the accident history, with plate changes, with MOTs, with all sorts of other items. So for example talking Porsche, check out this 997 Carrera 4S. You'd spot that there is a mileage odometer discrepancy. There's also a bit of an accident history and you'd want to know what those were about. You can see the charts of the mileage over time, but also you can see some photos of the accident it's been involved in and you'd want to know about that. Let's say this car has been repaired and you're looking at purchasing it. You'd want to know what it's been through in the past. Now, not only that, let's take some other examples. This Lotus Exige, for example, again, you'd want to be able to see that. And even this F80 BMW M3 that's certainly seen better days. Of course, Car Vertical also offer you guys 10% off using the code SHMEAM150. The link and information can be found down below. And as I say, I use Car Vertical to run checks on all of my cars and everything that I'm looking at buying and I thoroughly recommend you do as well. Now for today we've got a lot to go and get on with. There's another thing you guys have done while I've not been here. Go on. You took the exhaust to Quicksilver. We to did. To work on a new exhaust for this. Which is going to make it sound epic. I can't wait because I know that this is a little bit quiet. I obviously this was swapped back on while I was here but it's going to sound really really cool. Anyway we're taking this out which means we need to unplug the SeaTac does this still just miss? Nice. Always got to just double check that kind of thing. Make sure we're safe. Whee! Go pop this open. Get this unplugged. We'll get this started. We'll take out the GT on our first errand of the day. Need to do this out that way. So go. GT first, then we'll head back here before we go to Ferrari. Sounds like a plan. Okay, right. Let do me get this in? started. <laughs> They're still pretty good. But it can be better, much better. First thing then, it's not the easiest car to hold the camera in, is it? <laughs> no, it, it's such a small cockpit, so we're quite close together, which is fine. 
except when you're in here trying to film you, I can't actually see the screen, so if I'm not filming you, sorry. <laughs> and it's left-hand drive, which doesn't help with seeing stuff either. No, true. Although that Backside. is quite easy, because you know I can put my right hand right into the corner and things, but hey, let's it does the job. We're warm, engines at temperature. Have you missed driving this? I do miss driving this because you're sat so low to the ground. It feels like a completely alien thing. It just needs more drama back into it. The exhaust sound. This is super muted, isn't it? This is yeah, like, you don't get much. This is not what an American GT sounds like. And certainly not what this used to sound like. You do have to really kind of bring out the revs to get the best sound from it. Like, You get some of those flutters and things as well, which is just cool. I love driving it. I don't take it out often, and a car like this is never going to be something that you drive like every day. But when you drive it, it's what it makes you feel, and that's where this is so, so, so super special. Is that so, like what sense of occasion? Yeah, and it's knowing what it is and what it represents and the value of it, the rarity of it. You know, knowing that anybody else who sees you driving this thing on the road is just thinking, what on earth? Like, what is that? Most people don't know what this is in England. I don't Not know. True. Like, like, it's hard to explain to car people who are watching this who obviously do know what a Ford GT is, but you pull up at a petrol station or, like, a car park somewhere, and people will be like, what is that, Ferrari, Lamborghini? You know, like, yeah. the last thing they expect is you to point at the Ford badge on the bonnet and say, no, it's a Ford, because that doesn't make any sense. How could this possibly be from a regular company like Ford yeah. making a car like this? You know, shapes and lines, and obviously the buttresses towards the rear. It's and there is a bright pink van behind us as well. There is a very bright it's pink van. It's got the MSRT on. <laughs> Look at it. It's so like you, you cannot miss that thing. No, you it's cannot just miss funny. It. And um, a little birdie says that this is an exclusive for viewers of the Museum channel. We might have three Fords in the garage right now, but there could soon be a fourth. Oh. Boom! Have I said too much? Maybe. Uh, do we just, yeah? No, no, we leave it at that. We're not going to reveal any more than that yet. That's like a teaser for you guys. Oh dear, we've got the speed bumps. The speed bumps of doom. So we're yeah, private godlimans. Sorry, I was lifting this. You can press it about a second before you get there and it just goes <laughs> doof, doof. up. Straight up. Yeah, straight over. Straight over the bumps that the SF90 with lift, with lift couldn't do, could it? No, that's still scraped, but that is the winter tyres. But that's with the winter tyres with their slightly narrower fit and therefore smaller diameter to stop this goes over all of these completely fine so we will drop it off probably the first Ford GT they've ever MOT'd here I would imagine yes I believe it is but Godlemans obviously look after us very well with lots of work with all of the cars painting the SF90 roof box which you also <laughs> spoiled Acc in the video <laughs> maybe accidentally teased <laughs> eh, it happens I'll forgive you um, so they did that they've done a whole load of bits of paint with other things and stuff and MOTs and sorting cars out so Good guys, we very much appreciate the work by John and the team here to look after everything. And um, <laughs> I'm just like looking at, no, we're not, we're not squeezing through here. <laughs> we'll let everybody come this way and then we'll make our way down, drop the car. They'll put it onto their MOT testing equipment and then we'll probably bounce off and come back later, I guess. Yep, that sounds like a plan. We'll see what happens when we pull in in a second. So which car is easier to film it, the Ford GT or the van? What did you think? <laughs> no, the van. Depends on the driver. Oh, gravity. Yes. That, that slammed really hard. So the GT is here in the trusty hands of God Lemons until we get back a little bit later on. Although, funny fact, the national MOT system for the entire country is currently down. Yeah, it's so random. We pulled up. I think John called you, Tom, and basically yeah. said, are you guys coming? And we were like, yeah, we're on our way. And he just said, the MOT system's down, which, <laughs> yeah, things happen. It'll That's get not Godlemans. That is literally the government system for running MOT tests it needs to be restarted. Um, bye, GT. <laughs> Hold on tight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right, back to base, because we need to go grab a Ferrari. Now that we're back, step one. Unplug the Amira, that needs to scoot out the way because the Focus RS, which is up there, is coming down. Is that do you drive as well? It needs a drive. That's why that's coming down. This I just drove a decent distance. Look how easy that is. Much better. Because this, this is now on 800-ish miles. We're nearly run in. Nearly. Oh, 
Oh, I'm not taking it. Sorry, I've just, I've just realised. Sorry? I was going to say, oh, maybe we can get past the running in mileage and then, you know, happy days, but we're not. It also yeah. needs a wash. It's really dirty. <laughs> It's a bad time when that sounds better than the Ford GT. I can't hear you. Tough. They can. It's doing Lotus things. It's got a few little uh, foibles. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tom's those, like, what's all this? Those wheels were like a lovely silver when you bought the car. It's actually quite an interesting color because the color doesn't get filthy, but it is definitely filthy. Don't do that. No, don't do it. No, no, it's not PPF'd on the back. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, you can see there is clearly a layer of dirt over it, and especially on the wheels, which were a lovely silver and they're now not. Yeah, so we're going to get this down. Now everyone's like, why is the lift going up? Locks. Because it has to go up to go down. What goes up must come down. Oh dear. Key battery dead? Seems that way. Just Tom has no skills. <laughs> Try pressing the button next time. <laughs> Tom just decided to stroke the focus. It now you. has fingerprints running down the front. You can, can you show that on video? Just about. Just it... highlighting why it's special because it's orange. That's special. Orange. Yes. Are you taking the key? Yeah, you're driving it. Orange. Driving not your biggest, most favourite car of the collection. What mileage are we on out of interest? 7455. 7455. 7455. Almost the same as the GT. Bye. <laughs> seven, seven and a half thousand miles. It's not a lot. It's four years old. Four and a half years old, actually, nearly. But hey, I still like it a lot. SF90 time, which means off at the wall. Unplug the EV charger. We can drive in some lovely electric power, which is also what Tom doesn't love. Electric power and a Focus RS. Great combination. Imagine an electric Focus RS. Well, they've said no more Focus RS, haven't they? True. It is done. No True. more. Is the Focus still? Because they've now killed the Fiesta. The Fiesta is gone. The hatches are disappearing. Yeah. But let's pull this out and then get both cars ready. Now I've done a lot of asking people about driving with suction mounted roof racks as we head out onto the motorway because obviously there's a little bit of worry if I was to go very fast what would happen. Now I think they say you can drive 85 miles per hour and obviously for motorway driving like this you're not really going to go over that a normal run but I've checked there securely down every time actually every time i've got in the car and driven it while we've had the roof box on the top i've gone around checked all of the suction points made sure i can't shake it off but i'm still a little bit worried for some reason i think it's just subconsciously that you know the only thing that is holding that on is suction yeah i mean i've driven at 200 miles an hour with action cams suctioned on the outside of a car so should be completely fine there is a 992 of sorts coming past <laughs> nice. Prayer 4S of a newer generation than the one we were talking about earlier and probably in slightly better condition. Slightly being not the same <laughs> as yet. <laughs> Thanks to the car vertical check, that's what it's all about. But it's a gentle cruise from where we are now up the motorway. This is kind of like a pre run, a test run, if you will, prior to being on the motorways for my main big tour with this. Um, we've got the Focus RS in tow. There it I is. still really like that car. I'm sorry for anybody who isn't the biggest fan of it, but I really like it. I think most people really like it, just not Tom. Yeah, the Focus RS was so popular. And you know what's amazing? It's like an early 2016 blue one, the nitrous blue launch color car, that Mark III Focus RS. They trade for crazy money. They trade for as much now as I sold mine for, what, four and a half years ago. Wow. Yeah, and that's just a Focus. You know, like the market for those things is, is huge because so many people love it. You can't, there's not gonna be another one. Um, and obviously the Heritage is one of only 50, even though as Tom says, it's paint color, plus a few other details, 25 horsepower more, the orange intake piping in the front, blah, blah, blah. Some other nice little bits from Mount Yoon who are kind of official with Ford. But um, we are literally on a cruise right now. This is like hyper chill. Yeah, and it does it so, so well. It's kind of funny, we're going to the Ferrari dealer, even though we've got the get your car service light on, yeah. um, 
I'm going to do that after the tour. It's still on the right time, but after the tour rather than before, just because it makes sense to do the mileage and it's all running smoothly. Hey, we've just gone through 5,000 miles. Oh, that nice. must have been during this clip. Probably. And we didn't notice. That's fine. I would, I'll, put, I'll zoom in on that bit back in the past in the future. <laughs> you know see what I mean. You can see it. Um, but I'm taking it easy, hence everybody cruising past us because I just want to make sure we get there safely and you know, this does what it's supposed to do. We don't get a phone call from Tom being like, you just smashed the front of your own car. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. I don't even think about that. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be good. This is the new HRON complex. This is actually my first time coming here ahead of when it's actually officially opening. But what on the left there, we have the Ferrari showroom. Yeah. That's huge. Yes, we do. So I actually popped past recently, just I was in the area, and it's a pretty crazy place. And I believe they've also got new Bentley and I think new Lamborghini as well. Either being built, being finished, being built, but everything. Oh, look, it's an Abarth. We do, we do, <laughs> Trust we do quite you. like an Abarth, sorry. And more Porsches in better condition than the one we saw on Car Vertical. Uh, where are we going? Left in here. Left in here? Yep. Blue Corsa on that right. first F8. Looks really nice. Oh, we've got the phone going. Let's kill that. <laughs> Funny. Fast forward a little bit, because this has been my first ever visit here, we've been having a chat with the team, having a little look around. It's not officially opened yet, so we can't actually show you too much from inside, but this is gonna be a very exciting showroom. That car looks mega. It looks epic, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's been a real like head turner for anyone. There was a guy walked past us inside and stopped and just, just stared and was like, like what? <laughs> Everybody who walks past has spotted this and come to take a look at it. There are some very nice cars out here at the moment, just kind of filling the display. Mm, mm. Cool stuff. Anyway, we are actually going to head back because we need to get this back to the barn. We've got an appointment at the barn. Then we've got to grab another car, probably. Tom's already gone, as you can tell, because yep. he had to go meet with the people who just arrived. And then we need to go and get the Ford GT, which is done or nearly done. We don't know yet. We Hopefully it's passed with flying colors. <laughs> This is a really cool showroom. It's imposing. Hundreds upon hundreds of cars. This is a mega space and it's gonna be very exciting what they're up to. Yeah, it's just cool <laughs> to see like that many. This is HRON as well, by the way, same as Mayfair and South Kensington. So over the years, I've been to the HRO and Ferrari showrooms a whole lot of times. Even like my um, Hurricane STO comes from HRO and Lamborghini Pangborn. Yeah. So this is really cool to have this new site with so many different cars on it. Anyway, we are going to get this back. Then when we've got this back, we will figure exactly what we're doing next. Probably having some lunch if I'm hungry. Sound like a plan? Yes, 100%. Plan. We've got back. We've swapped around. The SF90 is up there in the middle for the moment because we're going to take out the 675 LT. And the reason for that is it needs a drive, um, which means we get a start up. And this always sounds from a cold start. Really awesome. really awesome. Then just pop out the lift so that it can come out because obviously it's pretty low to the ground. It's quite fun to watch that move. Car is beautifully clean, hasn't been driven for two months or so, hence why we're going to take it for a run now. I will probably drive it first, then we're going to come back with this and the GT, get them back home. And um, yeah, it's all going to plan so far today, which is a good thing. On a roll there, Brad. You're at one with the balls. We just found ourselves getting massively distracted. We did. No, we haven't been out in this in a while. The sunshine <laughs> is here, the roof came down, and we had a lovely drive. Which is perfect. We've now got some lunch. You're going to drive that. I'm yep. going to drive the GT. Godlemans have done the MOT. It's passed with flying colours, which is super kind of them. This is looking amazing in the sunshine. I don't know if you've just been looking at the paint. Basically, the, the blue, the cerulean blue flake comes out. So it's this weather where you see it, right? Something just made a weird noise. I heard that. I thought someone dropped something. I have no idea. Maybe it was something in the background, not the car. Who I knows? Feel, I feel like someone dropped something. Hopefully. Anyway, before food gets cold, we should probably get on the way. Let's go. Let's get back to base. Definitely love the look of that thing. But let me step in here, swing in. Left side, of course. Start this up. Failed to close the door properly. There we go. Right, let's head. Fast forward, we've had another little distraction because we've had basically some servicing with the lifts. So we've now got a whole lot of cars in the wrong place. 
that we're moving around and readjusting the trickle charges and making sure that everything's in the right place that we want it to be for the time being. So that means next up is the SLS to go under the, the C. Are we roughly on plan? I think we're roughly on plan. This is, yes, some garage shuffling right now. So we've just had everything effectively down. The Amira key is definitely in Tom's pocket. <laughs> he probably wants to come here. We'll stand this far away probably because it's... True. Trying a different mic. <laughs> Like every two seconds, going under the sea, then the GT500 will go under the heritage. Look, we've got Lotuses, Clios, Astons, Sabres, then it goes wrong. Next up, for GT, this is going to go obviously between the center and the STO, and I'm walking around with an extension lead for the first car we get to that's going to need one, which won't be too long, I'm sure. <laughs> things that have been left out of museum videos. It's gonna be hilarious. There are quite a few. Hi Brad! See you in a minute. Hi Brad! Bye, bye Tim. I've not heard this car starting up, but it's... I mean I have. On, not here. <laughs> at least I've not heard it here at the Schmuseum. That's maybe what I meant. So it appears we now have a race. We have Brad in the MX124. The MX124. And then over this way we have Tim with the SF90. Because Brad's car is going to go back underneath the Clio 1.2. So that needs to come out before that one can go in. And of course, in the smug silent E-Drive. I mean, that is the beauty of this car, right? Don't disturb anyone for a sleepy village. Traffic in this museum. Have you just realised you can't go in that way? Yeah. Okay, so Halo Bates spin round. Let's have a look at the wheels, people. There's the lovely <laughs> rotor forms. I forgot about the that. The lovely rotor form. Oh, wait. wait. Brad, what is going on there, mate? Um, wheel swaps. Winter is done, but I'm missing spigot rings. Well, I'm missing one spigot ring for that one, so. Okay, I was going to say, is it winter on one axle and not the other? It's like <laughs> just the drift setup. You know, some drift cars have different ah, set of wheels on the back. Okay. Except the other side are identical. So. Skinny, skinny. Over here, Tim is still negotiating the SF90. <laughs> Big smile on his face. At least mine's actually louder than the SF90 for once. Right now, anyway. What have I missed? Basically, he was quite happy at the fact that he has a car that's currently louder than one of the Schmimobiles because he was in E-Drive. He, he, he was in smug mode. I'm Although, driving around indoors. That said, his suspension makes more noise than this does. In E-Drive. <laughs> I was in E-Drive voluntarily. Yes. I enjoy it. As I said, you're in the smug, go for a sleepy village without waking anyone up mode. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me in my Ferrari with a roof box. The thing that's the most hilarious is why do you, you know, put a roof box on a Ferrari to make it practical, right? Yes. If you want to take your practical four-wheel drive winter, winter tire equipped Ferrari. <laughs> so we kind of got one of those. Yes. I don't know why I'm doing it this way around, but. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I, it still seems like a good idea. It's And again, the reactions that we've had from people, I think sums up why <laughs> you're doing it, right? I d I'm not about to do a Whiston Diesel and start jumping on the front of my car. Oh, good, good. Just in case there was any doubt about it. i say, where's the ladder? We'll, we'll, we'll get some ladders. And, um, um, what's he doing? He's like standing on the F8 up here. And yeah, and then we'll get one of the bubbles and we'll throw ladders at it and stuff. And we'll throw, <laughs> there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in a bubble. He's, and done then, it, he's done it all on his own. He's supporting himself. It's so perfect. I mean, it is only two feet wide. It's um, pretty colourful over there. I'm liking it. It is. Good. It is. In fairness, that is a very Skittles lineup. The Lusso will go there when all the building materials have moved. The Halo space is currently vacant, and we've got like one more space. But does this mean like a Halo <laughs> car of some description now goes in the Halo space? I don't know. 
the F1 car probably does when it comes back for now, until we've got the space here. That's a good shot. I was just randomly saying, I haven't even heard this yet. What? That's quite funny. In person, I haven't heard this car yet. I need to drive at some point soon. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get the key, let's go. No, not right now. <laughs> it's the evening, it's dark. Not, not now, but another day, I think me and you need to take that out for a run. Everything is parked back up for the time being. Although we do again have storage issues. Although as we've mentioned, barn two is obviously now being used for other things, which means we're trying to work with this space. And we have, is it six cars that aren't mine here right now? Uh, I, I believe so. We do this all one, the time. One, two, three, four, five, six. And yeah. I'm probably gonna have to sell something. So we're gonna say goodbye to one, maybe have to lose one or two of those. Oh yeah, maybe the Clio goes over there, all of this. Yes, so I've got, I've got plans for everything. Obviously, I'm about to embark on a bit of a journey with the SF90, a couple Enjoy. of thousand miles. We've gone through 5,000 today. Should get it up to about 7,000, which is not bad going, if you ask me. No, it's pretty impressive. Well, I hope you enjoy that trip. I'm very slightly jealous. I hope the roof box makes it back home fine. You guys shall find out very soon how the first long leg goes. But um, otherwise, I think we've had a pretty effective, efficient day. We had a lot of tasks, a lot of errands, GT to Godlemans, thanks to them, of course, for getting the MOT done with that. We've had the SF90, obviously, over to Ferrari, been to check out the upcoming HRON Ferrari showroom in Hatfield. We've had the lift serviced. We've had, what else has happened? We've had the Porsche sign, of course, you know, yes. to share that. Um, otherwise, we just had a whole lot of moving. It's felt like we've done a lot, but that's not a very long list. I mean, one minute it was like 11 a.m. and now it's like five, six or seven or something. No, it's like seven. Seven. The day's just the gone. The day has literally blasted by. So I guess on that, I'd like to say thanks again to Car Vertical. Remember, you can get 10% off using the code SHMI150. I do thoroughly recommend running a Car Vertical check if you are looking to purchase a vehicle available in many different countries as well. But of course, here in the UK, I have used Car Vertical on any used car that I've ever bought. I think in recent times, because it really gives you a great insight into what you're looking to purchase. So check that out, information is down below, but that is it for now, until next time.